Well, now I want to turn to our first build along of this evening. And this is with uh, Jess Dozier of Hangman Creek's uh, Diorama. This diorama is really something. And, and Jeff has been so nice and helpful in, in showing us how to, uh, to build it and to offering the kit to you at a 50% discount. So if you don't build this beautiful diorama, you got nobody to blame but yourself. Jess, welcome. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. All right, I'll spare you from my head because I want you to be able to see my amazingly clean and organized workbench. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, so um, yeah, I had a great holiday. Hope everyone did too. Um, so still working on components, but uh, kind of this diorama, we're, we're getting close on all the parts. So um, all the wood is complete, log boat's complete. Um, working now on basically the scenery abutments. And then really it's going to be a matter of um, what will be next week will be the uh, motor for the log boat. And then, you know, basically the putting the diorama together is actually goes really, really quick because you, you want to do it all at once anyway. So what I'm going to go over today is basically the, the scenery abutments because they're, they're a critical part. Um, the trestle, obviously, and they give some height to the diorama. That's part of why I did it. It also is uh, kind of a diorama. It's a cool place to um, display a train. So these are just hydrocal castings um, that I, you know, I made the patterns out of. And what I literally started with, you can see that okay, is I started off with, um, I basically just made a mold out of clay and obviously timbers um, or a, a pattern. And I roughed it up and got it to the contour I wanted, the height I wanted. And then I just made an RTV mold. And so I can make copies of these and um, makes a great paperweight as well. Uh, same thing on the other end is just a concrete abutment. And, you know, when you're making an abutment or you're making something like this, uh, you just do it just like they do out in the real world. Uh, you, you know, you make a, you basically make a form or hydrocal in it. And then when you pull everything apart, the pattern will show all that distressing and, you know, kind of exactly how they would have poured it, right? Um, and I put in some cracks with an exacto, and, you know, just roughed it up because, again, you know, rarely out there is stuff that's been sitting for a while perfect. Um, pretty straightforward on how to do these, but I want to go over a couple of things. Now, I did one of these really completely wrong just to show you how bad they can look if you don't do it right. So the way to do hydrocal is to build up color, you know, Tom, your fellow folks, you build up color slowly and you do it in washes. And I mean, really thin. When I make a wash, I generally go back and I double the water because I have a tendency to make them too dark. And so I usually go back and once I do my water, I go back and I just double the water, fit it out. You can always add color. You can never, ever, it's really hard to fix. So this was one, all right. But I mean, if you, what you're trying to avoid doing is painting. Because once you paint it, it's done. Um, but a wash will soak in, it'll build color, it'll show variation. But if you paint it, game over, okay? Great paperweight, needed one anyway. All right, so I, I literally started this um, right before the beginning of the show today. And so this is gonna lighten up some, but this is how fast this can be. So what I did was, is I made up just some variation tones of some burnt umber, raw sienna, a little khaki, and again, a lot of water, not much paint. And I use, um, just as uh, you mentioned, I use cheap Michael's uh, acrylics. Um, every variety, every color you could possibly think of is there and they're very inexpensive. So great, um, you know, kind of that last um, uh, little, you know, kind of narrative really shows how great those things are. And, you know, again, they cost a couple bucks each or nothing. So the way I did this was basically is I just did very light washes and I built them up. Now, if you see some variation on the bottom, the tide in my bay goes up and it goes down a bit. So what I did is I ran a little bit of a light moss green um, on the bottom to kind of show where that tide is going up. And I don't know if you can see, um, but this is a trick that uh, it was in, it's, uh, if you guys are familiar with um, Downtown Deco, great company, does really cool hydrocal buildings. He's been around forever, does great work. But one of his tips and his instructions was to highlight plaster was steel wool. And it works amazing on brick. It also works really good on scenery. So when you stay in this, it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna get some variation, but it's still gonna be pretty even. So I just go back with a little bit of steel wool and I literally just rub across and I mean gently. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna catch the, high, the ridges, the highlighted areas. 
and it's going to take just a tiny bit of that color off. And I do it on the timbers. I do it on everything. But I mean, really, uh, you got super gentle. You can always go back and add a little bit. But if you, you're basically going to, you're taking off a little bit of color, right? Um, but it's a neat little trick. Um, and it, it, again, replicates nature way better than I can with a paintbrush or trying to be too perfect, right? All right, so let's get down to the concrete abutment. So let's work on that one actually a little bit. Um, so again, this is just dolphin gray that's thinned down. Um, dolphin gray is good old cheap Michael's um, Hobby Lobby, all those fun places. Now, this one I want to show a little bit of age. So it's got a lot of cracks and crevices in here. And so again, this is going to lighten up a little bit overnight. That's fine. And one good thing to do with hydrocal always before you stain it, if you hydrocal is very dry, especially if it's been sitting for a while, I literally ran these under a faucet for about 10, 15 seconds just to get a little moisture on them. You can mist them. Uh, try not to do standing water, but I literally will immerse them in water. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, basically not, it's going to make them absorb colors um, pretty evenly. What can happen if they're real dry, they can model a little bit. And so sometimes you'll get little streaks and then that takes a little more work to get them out. So again, immerse in water. And I just did successive washes. Um, and I'll generally start a little lighter, maybe change the tone a little bit, you know, just to mix it up a little bit. All right. Pretty straightforward. Now, our friend alcohol in India ink. And we always want this to run like it would in nature, right? So I generally like to work top down, right? And it, a lot of it's going to evaporate. But I mean, you know, nothing fancy here, right? And all I'm trying to do is let this settle in the, you know, in the cracks and the crevices. Now it's going to evaporate. It, it literally starts off a tad dark, which can be a little freaky, right? But what it's going to do is it's going to settle and it's going to highlight all of those cracks and crevices. And then I'll go back and just run my steel wool across it. And I actually down is a little bit better because that's honestly how things would wash. So we're really pretty straightforward, but I don't know if you can tell, but it really highlights the, you know, the cracks and crevices in there really well. Um, and I, I'm a huge fan of, um, I love moss. I don't know why. Maybe it's a, nor a little bit of a Northwest model, but anything that you can get some variation in color in hydrocal or, you know, piers and any of those kind of areas will, you know, wherever moisture settles, uh, for me, it's just a place to introduce a little bit of color. And it looks like, you know, um, and again, you want to be real subtle with this because it's, again, this is actually um, the AK Interactive. So it's actually, you know, it's a lacquer paint, right? So it's actually going to um, really cover real well. I just go back and just a little highlighting on top. Pretty random. I'll just work it off with my finger. Yeah, I'm always washing my hands over and over again. And the same thing along maybe, you know, wherever, uh, you know, things would have settled a bit. And then, of course, I want it on the bottom because just like before on my other pier, I got water rising, you know what I mean, up and down. And if you do like this, maybe might be a skosh too much, but that's okay. I'm just going to take my steel wool and I'm going to work it off. If I can find it in my amazingly organized workbench. So again, really simple, but little things like that sort of add up. And it, um, again, you don't have to take you know too long. So what I'll do is I'll go back. Um, this needs to really, it needs to sit and dry to really get its tone right. Um, but it looks in person, I don't know how it's shown up on camera. It looks pretty real. I mean, it looks pretty close. Um, I got to work on that bottom just a little bit. Um, I'll probably thin down my, there we go. Take a little bit off that steel wool. 
And again, everything, I don't know, um, one of the big things, and this is one took me a long time to learn and I still screwed up, is there's times when you paint something, you want to paint a locomotive. What you don't want to do is paint scenery or paint things that are in nature. Uh, color builds over time. And so successive stains really make a big difference when you're trying to replicate things that are out in the world, right? Um, all right, so something pretty straightforward, pretty simple on that one. And this will lighten up a little bit too overnight. Um, they, they're always a tad dark initially, and then uh, they'll, they'll lighten up a bit. Uh, but this one too, it's in a pretty wet area, so I'm keeping it pretty dark. I put a little bit of moss on the timbers here, a little bit on top. And even though this stuff's gonna get covered and hidden, and this too will get a little bit of um, uh, you know brush on it when it actually goes on the diorama, it'll get a little sprinkling of dirt um, even though I'll let it wash down. But the more that you take this to a high level, then when you add layers, it'll really make a difference in how it looks, right? Um, basically, that's it for today. Um, so next week, log boat motor. And again, here's our log boat. Pretty happy with it. It actually, I really, the rust came out really good. Uh, I like it because it's a bulletproof process, but when you're starting to get all these things together and there's some contrast in your colors, um, it starts to look pretty fun. And it, you know, comes together pretty well. Um, all right, that's it. Any questions? Oh, and I do have, um, someone brought up the magnet piece earlier and I meant to chime in, but uh, a friend of mine, um, who's a very good modeler, uh, one of the folks I built to hang the creek with, um, he actually takes the small uh, magnets and he embeds them underneath his rails, uh, basically as uncoupling ramps. And so what they do is he actually puts like a styrene post. And so he marks where these are. He buries them under in his road bed. He hides them, but they literally, uh, it took a little experimenting, but he puts one under each rail and it literally acts as an automatic uncoupler. So what you do, if you roll the car up and you get it centered over where these are marked, um, it will actually force those couplers apart and you literally have hands free, 100%, no touch uncoupling. It's amazing. Um, you know, for years we fiddled with the picks and all that stuff. And then he, uh, the, the guy's got a little bit of a weird brain. He just said, you know what, I'm going to try this. I'm going to figure it out. And it's amazing. It's an O and three. It works for HO. It works for O. Uh, but it's, it's a pretty cool use for him. Um, but it's nothing's more fun than actually being able to run trains like real trains to push a car up or locomotive, stop it, back up a little bit, and it literally will, you know, push itself apart. And you can literally push that car wherever you want and drop it off and go back. So that's, that is a good use for the magnets. It takes a little bit of work, but it's 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 pretty cool. All right, that's all I got. Yes, I wonder if you could give me his name and a contact because I'd love to have him come on the show and, and talk in detail about how he does that and, and show us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll send him to you. His name's Stan Oxendall, um, and he's an amazing modeler. He's got an insane layout, um, but he's one of the guys I built the Hangman Creek with. And uh, But he's just, uh, he's one of those guys that, you know, he if he doesn't like something, you know, about um, running his trains, he'll figure it out because he's like, yeah. you know, he, goes, he, goes, he was just sick of having this really cool looking train that he had to put, you know, the picks in or move a car or whatever. So he, he just, and I haven't seen anybody else do it. Maybe somebody else has been doing it. I don't know if it's the first I've seen it, but it worked cool. But yeah, I'll send him his name. So if you could send me his email and, and contact telephone number, whatever, I would really would appreciate it, Jess. And I've got a question for you. All right. You, you talk about uh, the stains and so forth. Do you start with the browns, with the greens, with the blues, with the reds? Is there, is there certain colors that go on first, second, that kind of thing? Yeah, so whatever you want to set the color of. So the basically the first color you put on a hydrocal will be the predominant color. Everything else will um, uh, not absorb nearly as well. So the general rule is whatever you want it to be is what you need to start with. So if you want a gray, you know, a light gray, you need to start with light gray. I generally like to work lighter to dark. Um, because again, you know, that simple rule, you, it's, you, you know, you, you can't fix this, right? It's done. Um, but you can always add color. Um, so again, lighter to darker, but whatever in hydrocal, the first color absorbs, it will, that's going to be 80% of the color. 
And then after that, basically, you know, maybe, you know, just random areas, you know, that you want to highlight. And when I do something too, I try not to be even. I did not paint this the same tone everywhere. I started, in, and it's hard to see maybe on camera, but there are subtle, so in other words, a little bit of a shade here, a little bit of a shade here, right? Just so you get a little bit of variation. Um, you're just trying to avoid painting, but yeah. Prominent color first, lighter to darker, always. At least, and that's what my brain says, whether that's the right way or not, I'm not sure. So even the dominant color, you would start with a light color first of that dominant color, whatever it is. Yep. And then you would build, and then you'd build on that. Yep. Yeah, and I, I, I literally don't not put alcohol in India ink on, I, I literally, I don't think I put, I don't put it on something. So um, like this mixture right here, I can tell it's getting a little bit um, too strong. I'm gonna have to add a little bit of alcohol to it, um, but it will, it's, it's either this or you can do, like when you do scenery, a really great way to highlight rock is at the very end is to do a black or dark gray wash because what it'll do is it'll highlight all those crevices. Um, I generally, when I'm gonna do a big area, I'll do an acrylic wash. If I'm doing little stuff like this, I just use my alcohol but um, it evaporates, right? So it's mm -hmm. pretty controllable. Um, and then go back and dry brush. Dry brushing is really important because it, it, it'll go back and it'll highlight, it'll uh, take a little color off. So, yep. Anybody else have any questions for Jess? Jess, thank you so very much. Hope you have a nice new year and we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Yeah, I think I'll be uh, talking to you guys, or I'm looking forward to Keith's segment. He's a, he's a good friend of mine and has helped me a great deal. So I'm looking forward to him. He's, he's a, he's a fun guy. Anyone get the word out. He's, he's got a great personality. He'll be, he'll be fun on the show. That's great. Thanks so very much. All right. See ya.